It's harder to think of anything scarier than being on a ship or a boat that's met with an accident at sea. If the accident is bad and water starts pouring in, you're facing a race against time for rescue to arrive or to get into a lifeboat before it sinks. Accidents involving ships and boats can be dramatic and terrifying, but they can also be pretty spectacular. In this video, we're going to look back at some of the most amazing shipping and boating mishaps of all time. The British take their shipbuilding very seriously, and so a disaster like the one that befell the RMS Queen Elizabeth is extremely embarrassing to them. When she was launched in September 1938, she was the largest passenger liner ever constructed with a length of more than 1,000 feet and a width of more than 100. Within two years, she was sent to New York to keep her out of the way of the Second World War, but she was quickly brought back to serve as a troop transport ship from 1946 to 1946. After that, she returned to passenger duty and sailed transatlantic routes for two decades before being bought by American investors in 1968. They wanted to turn her into a tourist attraction in Florida. Sadly, that wasn't to be. The aging ship was deemed a fire hazard by Florida's authorities, and so she was sold to an investor in Hong Kong in 1970. It turned out that the Floridians were right about the fire risk. A fire broke out on board while the ship was in Hong Kong Harbor, and the water cannons used to fight it caused the ship to capsize. It was damaged beyond repair, and what was left after the fire had to be scrapped. The SS Mahena was another ocean liner that ended up being repurposed because of a war, although in the SS Mahena's case, it was the First World War as opposed to the Second. Built for the Union Company of New Zealand, the Mahena was supposed to ferry passengers back and forth across the Tasman Sea between New Zealand and Australia, a job she began in November 1905. First-class passengers aboard the 5,000-ton vessel enjoyed a range of luxury facilities, including a music room with a grand piano. She was still in service when the First World War broke out and found herself reclassified as a floating ambulance and hospital service. She was even given a temporary new name to match her new role, His Majesty's New Zealand Hospital Ship No. 1. After the war, she went back to her original job, but by 1935, she was showing signs of age and had been sold to a shipbreaker's yard. Fate had other ideas for her. While she was out at sea being towed to the yard, she was dragged into the path of a cyclone, which split her tow line and sent her drifting to Fraser Island. Having beached there, she couldn't be dislodged, and so she remains in situ to this day. Officially, the FV Paysetter is missing and has been since 1996. Unlike the Marie Celeste, though, the authorities have a pretty good idea what happened to her. They just don't know where to look for the wreck. The vessel was a crab fishing boat built in 1976 under the name Priscilla Ann. But changing hands twice in her lifetime and ending up in the hands of crab fishers Matt Pope and Dale Lindsay under the name Paysetter in the 1990s. On January 27, 1996, the ship was reported missing after failing to return to port from a fishing expedition. A distress beacon was picked up in Kodiak, Alaska, and the Coast Guard set out to search for the lost ship. The beacon was found, as were two life rafts, but of the ship, there was no sign. Eyewitnesses who'd seen the ship at Dutch Harbor in Alaska reported that it was fully laden with crab pots, but Captain Pope had added more than 20 more crab pots to the load before leaving the harbor. The ship was rolling badly as it sailed away, and so it's presumed that the overloaded vessel sank. The Scandinavian ship Cherry Venture ended up being part of the landscape on Queen Island's Tiwa Beach for almost as long as it was ever on the waves. The 1,600-ton cargo ship was launched in 1945 from Sweden under the name Scania, but also spent time as both the Timmer Venture and the Slot before her final name was eventually settled upon. By 1973, she traveled halfway around the world and made it to Australia, where her regular cargo route took her between Brisbane, 
in Auckland. We've just heard a story about a ship that sank on account of having too much cargo, but when Cherry Venture ran aground on the beach in July 1973, it was carrying too little. The ship sailed into a severe storm and would have been able to weather it if it had been fully laden. But without cargo on board, it rolled and reeled around in the 40-foot high waves. Eventually, one of those waves deposited it upon the beach, and she couldn't be refloated. The entire crew escaped unharmed, and the ship was sold to entrepreneur Peter Vegalis, who believed he could refloat it using a different method. He was wrong. The wreck was eventually buried on the beach in 2007. Here's another breached ship that turned into a tourist attraction. It's the MS Riverdance which ended up stuck on the sands close to Blackpool in England on January 31st, 2008. Blackpool is a town that's already famous around the world for its tower, but for a while, the river dance was running the tower close when it comes to visitor numbers. Built in Germany and launched in 1977, the Roll-On-Roll-Off ferry was in service with Seastruck Ferries when the incident occurred and was serving the route between Haysham and Wirren Point. The wave that ended her sailing life caught her unawares, catching her broadside and shifting her cargo around, which unbalanced her. She sent out a distress call and was met with several rescue ships, but she was listing heavily and couldn't be prevented from running aground. When she hit the beach, she did so at such an angle that much of her cargo spilled out onto the sands and was collected up by locals. Fortunately, nobody was hurt in the accident, but despite numerous attempts, the river dance couldn't be saved. She was dismantled in situ in October of the same year. For obvious reasons, not every boat, ship, or submarine that was used during the Second World War returned to port at the end of its mission. Many were lost, and it's likely that we'll never find the wrecks of a lot of them. But some do still turn up, even after all this time. One such example is the Japanese submarine that was found on Kiska Island in Alaska in 2015. It's thought that it might even be the same submarine that was used to sink the USS Abner Reed in August 1943. Some of the Alaskan islands were occupied by the Japanese during the war years, and Kiska was one of them. When they were finally driven from the land, they didn't get a chance to take all of their equipment with them. And so some things, like this A-type midget submarine measuring only 78 feet from one end to the other, were abandoned. Despite the obviously cramped conditions inside the sub, it was expected that two Japanese soldiers would serve in it at the same time. Many ships would love to be referred to as America's most luxurious cruise liner, and so it would be wrong to single just one of them out. But the SS America would have to be considered among the top contenders. When she was in her prime, she was one of the best-looking ships on the water. She wasn't always as good-looking as she was in her cruise liner days. Initially, she'd been a troop transport vehicle during the Second World War, shipping soldiers from place to place under the name of USS West Point. Only after the war did she receive the investments and upgrades that made her such a remarkable luxury vessel. She welcomed first-class passengers for almost four decades. But by the 1980s, she begun to look dated. Originally destined for a shipbreaker's yard, the SS America was instead bought by an investment company in Thailand and was to be moved to Phuket for another refurbishment. She never made it. A storm ran her aground close to Fuerteventura, Ventura, where she was broken clean in half by the tide. It was immediately obvious that she couldn't be salvaged. And so she was left to slowly sink over the course of the following two decades. Earlier, we told you about a Japanese World War II era submarine that had been found in Alaska. Now, here's another vessel from the Second World War that seems to have made much further inroads into the United States of America. Some reports say that in February 2016, a German U-boat was found at the bottom of Lake Ontario and brought to the surface. The markings on the submarine were still visible and identified as a UX-791, allegedly an experimental German submarine based on the U-1200 model, but with extensive modifications. 
There had always been rumors that the Germans were trying to send U-boats down the St. Lawrence River during the war. If this discovery is what it appears to be at face value, it would seem to confirm those rumors. Just as soon as the reports appeared, though, they vanished. Some sources say that the whole thing is a fabrication. Was the U-boat ever really found at all? Or did the authorities find something disturbing on the U-boat after it came to the surface and decided to cover it up? Looking at the shipwreck on the beach in North Bimini in the Bahamas, you could easily believe that it's been there for decades, perhaps even centuries. In reality, it's only been there for a little over 20 years. Exposure to the elements is causing the stricken freighter to rot away very quickly. This is the ship known as the Gallant Lady, not to be confused with the enormous super yacht that goes by the same name. Gallant Lady once sailed under the flag of Belize, but is understood to have ended up in her current predicament after failing prey to the Hurricane Mitch in 1997. Why she was abandoned after she was washed up is unknown, but it's possible that she was damaged by impact to the point that her crew decided it simply wasn't worth trying to free her again. Since then, she's been battered by every high tide that's rolled through the area, so perhaps it isn't a surprise that she's in such a state. Before much longer, what's left of the shell of the gallant lady will collapse in on itself and the whole wreck will wash out to sea. This next incident isn't too much of a shipwreck as a wrecked captain. But in February 2019, a Russian cargo ship collided heavily with a bridge close to Busan in South Korea. Not only did the ship inexplicably hit the bridge, which the captain should have seen coming from a long way away, but it also attempted to run away from the scene, as if nothing had happened, allegedly when the Korean Coast Guard eventually caught up with the fleeing vessel and detained it, the captain was found to be very drunk. The ship, known as Sea Grand, had only been in South Korea for two days when the crash happened and was supposed to be heading home to Vladivostok with over 3 million pounds of steel coils aboard. It's thought that none of the cargo was lost even though the smash-up tore a hole in the front of the 370-foot long ship. The bridge was also damaged by the incident, leading to its temporary closure. The captain of the ship was never named but we suspect he lost his job when he eventually returned to Russia. Cruise ships tend to be very large vessels, so you would like to believe that they would be able to see each other coming. Apparently, that's not always the case, because two of them managed to get into a head-on collision while trying to dock in the port of Cozumel, Mexico. Amazingly, both of the ships belong to the same company, Carnival. One is the Carnival legend, and the other is the Carnival Glory. There was nothing about the Carnival Glory that looked all that glorious after the crash caused a partial deck collapse of its deck. It's thought that it was the crew of the Carnival Glory who was at fault for the collision. The ship was trying to dock, but Carnival Legend was already stationary and alongside. Despite the obvious signs of damage, we can see here, Carnival deemed that both of the ships remained seaworthy and so they set off again after passengers were giving an extra 24 hours in Cozumel while basic repairs were made. A collision between cruise liners is dangerous enough. A collision involving ships carrying oil is potentially lethal, not only to the people aboard the tankers, but also to the marine environment that would be affected by an oil spill. Even though every possible precaution is taken when it comes to moving oil and dangerous substances, accidents sometimes happen. In May 2019, a 760-foot-long oil tanker was making its way down the Houston Ship Channel when it came up to contact with the tugboat pushing along two barges. One of the barges was capsized immediately on impact and the other was damaged so badly that the gasoline stock inside it immediately began to leak out into the water. Thankfully, the oil tanker known as Genesis River wasn't damaged or the situation would have been much worse. It's thought that the equivalent of around 9,000 barrels of Reformate, a gasoline blending component, escaped into the water before the incident was brought under control. 
Looking at the size of the hole that was ripped into the side of the afflicted barge by the impact, it's a wonder that all 25,000 barrels didn't ebb away. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.